Rosemary oil, caffeine shampoo, peptides, what actually works. Today we're going to find out which one of these things actually help your hair grow versus which ones are just hype for clicks and views and we're using science not marketing. On today's episode of Grow With The Pro, we are focusing on one of my favorites, Lab Muffin Beauty. If you don't know me, my name is Angelica. I post videos at least twice a week all about growing long, healthy hair. So if that seems interesting, consider subscribing and let's get into it. So Dr. Michelle Wong, who goes by Lab Muffin Beauty, is one of my favorite creators online because she breaks down skincare, hair care, almost everything cosmetics, and she goes deep into the science, focusing on what actually works, not just all the frivolous stuff and not demonizing certain ingredients because someone just said sulfates are gonna damage your hair so let's talk about what works what doesn't and how to stop wasting your money on products that don't actually give you any results so starting off let's talk about why most hair products fail here's the thing most hair products don't actually help you grow hair faster or grow longer hair they just help you retain length faster. The best thing they can help is improving the health of your scalp, which will help you grow out healthier hair and help you with length retention. Michelle explains that unless something is affecting your follicle directly, it cannot actually speed up the rate of your hair growth. That's why a lot of products sound really exciting, but then when you look into the science of how it's actually working, you find that it doesn't necessarily work the way it's advertised in the packaging. So let's break down some of the popular ingredients that you might have seen everywhere maybe even on this channel and let's see what Lab Muffin Beauty says about if this is a hit or a miss if it's science or hype so firstly let's start with one that I personally love rosemary oil does it work according to Michelle yes sort of the thing is on her side she focuses on the science and most results when it comes to rosemary oil are anecdotal which means it's just word of mouth people who've said i've used it and it works great for me but when it comes to the science there has been research that has compared it to a two percent minoxidil however it is very limited they aren't that many studies on it so that's why she's like shaky on it it helps in some cases when it comes to circulation on the scalp which does promote hair growth and overall scalp health but when it it comes to an abundance of medical evidence proving that it actually helps with the rate of your hair growth or helping your hair grow that is very limited so she's not like jumping for joy about it so on the list of does it work or not hype or not it's more like promising but not a miracle let's go to the next really popular product that has quite a lot of science behind it but what does Michelle think caffeine shampoos she thinks yes ish she points out that caffeine has the ability to penetrate the hair follicle and may stimulate hair growth, but only at certain concentrations. So you can't just pick anything that says caffeine on it and think it's going to work. It has to be at the right concentration. Another thing is it would probably work if it was like a caffeine serum, caffeine something else, but for a caffeine shampoo, most people don't leave shampoo on their hair long enough for it to actually penetrate the follicle or the scalp in any way. You wash it off so quickly that it probably won't have as big of an effect as if it was something else. Kind of in the same way, if you have like retinol in your face wash or your cleanser, it probably won't make a bigger, a big enough difference versus having retinol in your serum or your moisturizer or just retinol cream by itself. The next thing is peptides and growth factors. She thinks this is very interesting and she can't necessarily give a definitive answer, at least not the last time that I checked, I don't know about now. And this is only because we are pretty early into the peptides and growth factor. It seems very promising, even for skincare, but we just haven't had enough time to research it and see how much it can affect the hair. She believes that some peptides have the ability to signal the follicle to keep it in the anagen hair growth phase for a longer amount of time, but there just isn't enough large scale research yet. Also note that sometimes when it comes to this research, some companies will pay a, a company or they'll pay scientists to conduct research for them to see if this ingredient works or not, but it's always kind of questionable because it's like it's directly relating to their product. So that's why when things are very limited in their research, they wait till it has like a, a wider reach. It very well could be the future of hair growth products, but we just can't bank on it yet. However, nothing bad, so it doesn't hurt to try if you're interested. Now one, this one may upset quite a few people because a lot of people with natural hair love this specific ingredient, and this is castor oil. She believes this one is a no, 
Not that it doesn't do anything, it just doesn't directly help speed up the rate of your hair growth. She believes this is healthier when it comes to like length retention, keeping in the moisture, having a healthy scalp. But there's no solid scientific evidence. Now remember what I'm saying? Scientific. Just like rosemary oil, there's probably a lot of anecdotal evidence, probably people you've met, people you know in the past, a bunch of people who've talked about how they used castor oil and it helped thicken up their hairline, it helps thicken their hair growth, it makes their hair grow faster. But when it comes specifically to science, it just hasn't been researched enough or whatever research has been done has not been enough to prove that it directly helps the rate of your hair growth, but it can still help with the health of your hair, just not in the way that it's advertised. Number five is minoxidil, which honestly is the gold standard, which is why when almost any new hair treatment is brought up to figure out if it helps grow hair, it's usually compared to minoxidil because that's the one that has been the most widely researched and agreed upon by most scientists. Lab Muffin Beauty says that she wholeheartedly agrees with this one because it is one of the only ingredients that's been proven to actually help speed up the rate of your hair growth. The only thing is it is not for everyone because one, just like anything, you have to use it consistently, but a lot of people are prone to getting side effects and the certain things like you can't use it around children or babies, you can't use it around pets, and you have to use it consistently and sometimes if you stop, all the hair that you grew with the minoxidil may fall out. So it might be like a lifetime thing and it's not the cheapest product on the market. So as you can see, even if something is backed by science, everything has caveats and it's important for you to find something that works for you specifically. So now for this next segment, let's talk about how you can spot the hype, okay? Michelle emphasizes that whenever you find something and someone's trying to sell something to you, Always ask them, is there specific evidence that's backing up this research or is it just a claim that's been slapped on the bottle? I'll give you an example. A couple years ago, a brand reached out to me and they wanted me to promote a hair care range. I think it was a shampoo, a conditioner, a serum, and maybe one other product, like a leave-in conditioner. And the whole concept of their brand was biotin. I think it was actually called like biotin something. I don't remember, it was a long time ago. But everything in their range was infused with biotin and all these different things and they asked me to promote it, my rate card, and I said, oh, this was great, these products look great, I'd love to try them. However, before I promote them on my channel, I would like to know what research has gone into these products because from my understanding, you actually can't get any topical benefits specifically targeted at hair growth when it comes to biotin applied topically. Biotin has been proven, if you're lacking, to improve the hair growth rate if you ingest it. But when you put it on your hair, from what I've seen, it hasn't really done anything. So I thought maybe if it's possible, maybe you've done other research and maybe it does something else. For example, collagen, right? Collagen has been getting a bad rep lately since people discovered that putting collagen on your skin doesn't actually increase the amount of collagen in your skin that's what it's sort of marketed as but what it is it is just extremely hydrating it is an amazing hydrator it keeps the skin looking nice and plump and it can give the illusion that you have more collagen but it's actually more of a hydrating ingredient so if anything it's got a bad rep because it's advertised for doing the wrong thing like it says it's going to give you more collagen but if anything it's giving you more hydration which is still a good thing so when it came to the biotin thing i was asking them maybe it does something else to help hair grow the hair but I just haven't found out about it yet so can you just tell me what that is and they ghosted me and I've never heard from them again so that's a good sign that it was probably a gimmick and they actually didn't do any research into using biotin topically so also if you see something that says it's been clinically reviewed just try and see what specific studies that were because if there's only one study and it was paid for by the brand probably biased. Also note that almost all medical professionals, including Michelle, note that taking care of your scalp is one of the most important things you can do, and a healthy scalp is what's going to be the perfect starting point for healthy hair growth. No products will just magically improve the rate of your hair growth. Like if you're only washing your hair once a month and you're clogging a whole bunch of products on it and then you put this like sacred hair drops on your hair and you're like oh it's gonna make my hair grow well everything else you're doing is really bad so it probably won't so i'm not gonna lie i fall i've fallen for the hype many times at the end of the day the only thing regardless of whether it's an amazing product or not the only thing that will actually make your hair grow is number one consistency to overall health like your body internally scalp care protective styling or no or low manipulation styling and most of all 
patience. Everybody's hair grows at a different rate. Everybody's learning. Everyone can get a little bit better. So if your hair has been the same length for a while, don't give up. Be patient and focus on things that you can control. You can't control how fast your hair grows by willing it to grow faster. You can only do things like care better for your scalp, monitor your ends, oil your ends at night, and those are the things you can control. Now, if there's a product that you've heard of that you want me to try in the comment section below that seems like it's been backed by science, like, you know, a peptide treatment or something like that, I personally never tried peptides on my hair. Let me know in the comment section below and I'll definitely be willing to try it. Click this playlist here with all the other videos in the Grow With The Pro series. Hit my face right there to subscribe if you didn't in the beginning. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!